to Live With, brought to you by Species Nutrition. I'm Dave Palumbo, and today's guest is was actually our first ever Live With guest, and uh, she's got a new autobiography, I guess you could say docudrama out. It's being released uh, Friday to the public. It's called Transformer. The person I'm talking about is Janae Marie Kroc. Welcome back. Thanks, Dave. Thanks for having me on. You have a great story. Uh, back when we first interviewed you, I can't even remember how many years ago. I think it was about two and a half years ago. Um, you had been um, outed on uh, social media via, I believe, Louis Marco. And mm-hmm. um, Matt, Matt, your former name, Matt uh, Kroc, had been a powerlifter, had been a you know, bodybuilder, you know, a Marine. And, and that's, that's how I knew you and how the world knew you. Right. And you had, had this secret life going on where you were you know, dressing you know, as a woman, as a transgender woman, and, you know, you had a separate uh, profile on Instagram, and I guess Louis Marcus, someone had told him, and he had put it out there, and you decided to go public with it, and that's when you came on our, on our show, and we talked all about that. Since that time, you've been filming a, a, a documentary on your life and what you've been going through, and it's being released this Friday. Talk to us about this and how this project came about. Okay, yeah, so what happened was, um, funny enough, um, the videographer on the uh, on the documentary had actually done, did some freelance work on the side and had actually filmed me for Muscle Tech oh, um, about funny. six months before that. And uh, so then when he heard about the story breaking, he's like, he contacted the director and said, hey, Michael, um, I met this person. It's a really fascinating story. I, I really think you'd be interested in it. So Michael, he filled Michael in and uh, Michael contacted me and said, hey, this is what I'd like to do. I'd like to come out and meet with you in person, no cameras or anything, and just to explain to you what, what I'm all about and what I have in mind. And and so we sat down and I basically told him, I said, look, I'm not interested in being some kind of reality TV star or anything like that. Um, and I definitely don't want anything sensationalized or this turned into a freak show because, you know, with me being so muscular in my background, I could, you know, that could easily happen. Um, but I said, look, I said, if we can be open and honest about everything, and we can help educate people that don't understand and we can inspire people like me, then I'm all for it. And, and I really felt like Michael's heart was in the right place, like he didn't have any hidden agenda and he just wanted to tell my story openly and honestly. And for the people who have seen the documentary, I think he did a very good job in doing that and placing my trust in him was definitely the, the right move. Yeah, now you guys had sent me a link to it to, so I can preview it before we did this interview and I watched it and I'm telling you, I really liked it a lot. I found I think it'll be compelling not just for the bodybuilding and fitness community, but for anyone. Um, you know, it, it's a great story whether you're a bodybuilder or not. Uh, I think it tells a truthful story and honest. And I, I, and I don't and I don't think you could have been any more honest than this. It was a very open. At some points, I actually felt your anxiety because I felt it was so well captured by the documentarians that um, I think that, that that people will really love the, the to watch this. Um, I, was it hard for you to do this and be so honest? No, I mean, you know, after so many years of hiding everything, it felt really good to be able to be open and speak honestly about it. And to be honest, that's kind of my nature. I'm a very open person. And looking back, I don't know how I hid everything for as long as I did. But, you know, it was totally out of fear and, and fear of what you know people's reactions would be and how it would affect my life. Mm-hmm. But um, no, honestly, the funny thing is when shooting the film, I had to remind myself sometimes that I was wearing a mic and the cameras were on me 24-7. <laughs> Because I'm just being me and being honest about everything. And mm-hmm. what you see is my day-to-day life. You see you know, me interacting with my boys. You see you know, me getting the consults for the surgeries and my parents' reactions. And, and all of that is completely authentic. And I think that comes through in the film. And, and uh, yeah, you get to see everything I struggle with, the ups and the downs, and, and uh, what my life was like for the two-year period after I was outed. Was, that, was it a difficult scene to film with your dad? Because your dad obviously is not accepting of, of what's going on, or at least in the film he was not accepting of what's going on and in denial. And it looked like you were a little uncomfortable there. And it, how has that relationship evolved over the last two years since the film? You know, honestly, with my parents, both my mom and dad, you know, they really haven't had the best reactions. I mean, obviously not what you're hoping for. Right. Um, but, uh, but they do love me and they're not going to disown me or anything like that. But at the same time, yeah, I mean, I haven't gone to Christmas or Thanksgiving the last several years. Um, I've been uninvited from weddings and stuff like that. Right. And, uh, my parents' views really haven't changed. I mean, like I said, they love me and, and they're not going to cut me out of their life or anything like that. But, um, but at the same time, they don't fully understand it. And even, you know, and, they, and they're, it's even hard to have a conversation with them. They don't really want to talk about it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they're in a bit of denial. And, and uh, my mom, especially, her coping mechanism is avoidance. So not really a good one. But, 
but it, it's still difficult and hopefully eventually they'll come around and we can talk about it and, and hopefully they'll come to understand. But, um, but you know, unfortunately it is what it is. Well, I mean, yeah, but you have really been, I mean, you have been cut out of their life in a sense if you're not allowed going to weddings and stuff like that. I mean, that's family type events, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, and that's definitely hard, and and um, you know, and especially like the holidays thing and stuff like that. And, and it's you know, and it's it's not like they, you know, my mom especially, she's not going to say don't come, but she'll say things like, well, I don't want a bunch of drama, I don't want people to be uncomfortable. Right. So basically, letting me know, you know, don't, you know, don't show up looking like this, and and uh, you know, so then it's like, well, if that's how you feel, then I'm just not even going to come. And right. and my brothers haven't been going either, so it's. You know, hopefully that's going to change, and um, right. you know she'll eventually come around. But but yeah, it's been tough. It's as and as a parent myself, I just I really can't understand that. Mm. Um, you know, I can understand not understanding. I can understand it being difficult, but I can't understand making you know not making any effort to understand or, or try to figure out what's going on. Are you still dressing as a woman and as as a, a man during the day? I mean, I mostly present like this at work at my job. The only way they know me is as Janae. Uh -huh. um, you know, I mean, I also, in addition to being transgender, I also identify as gender fluid and non-binary. Right. Um, so my presentation is more masculine at times, but um, I would even say that it's very, what a lot of people refer to as like gender queer. I mean, my nails are always painted. I always carry a purse. Most of my clothing, I wear women's jeans and tops. Um, but, you know, with my size, I'm still, I, I'm not I'm a lot smaller and not nearly as strong as I used to be, but I'm still carrying around 240 pounds of muscle. And, um, you know, so it, it's... You know, there's days it's it. You know, it's easier for me, I guess, to pass as very masculine because of my body and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. um, I, I don't, you know, I, I don't consciously dress and or try to pass as male any longer. <laughs> so it's and I and my name is legally Janae. I'm legally female. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's you know, like I said, it's a very blurry presentation, but but definitely more towards the feminine side for sure. Do people just think you're like a female bodybuilder at this point, like who don't yeah, know you? Yeah, I, I would say that's how I get read most of the time. Like if yeah. I'm at the airport when I'm traveling and stuff, all the time I'll be like, oh, do you compete professionally? And what's your name? Oh, I, it's so nice to meet a you know, female strength athlete. So I, I would say that's how I get read most of the time, yeah. Right, right. now I, I know you work as a pharmacist. Um, where are you currently employed? Are you in a hospital setting or are you in a, in a yeah, store? Hospital setting. I, yeah, I work at um, Henry Ford Hospital in West Bloomfield, Michigan. Mm -hmm. um, very nice hospital, great staff. They've been very supportive. And this is how I interviewed. This is the only way they know me. Everyone knows that I'm trans. Right. And uh, it's been a great environment. So it's been really nice to, to work there and, and be accepted that way and not have it be an issue. So they don't care. It, it doesn't matter to them. In other words, as long as you do your job. Yeah, as long as they do a good job of pharmacists, that's all they care. <laughs> is that something that you enjoy doing, pharmacy? Um, yeah, I wouldn't say it's a passion of mine, like, you know, powerlifting or even activism and, you know, with trans people and stuff yeah. like that. But it's definitely a good career and it's rewarding in a lot of ways. Gotcha. Now, um, let's talk about the competitive aspect of this whole thing. You are, you were very competitive back in the day. You love to the powerlift. You love to bodybuild. Is this something that you might consider getting back into as a woman, or, or is this something that you, you, you're kind of done with at this point in your life? Well, I mean, I'll always train until the day I die, for sure. I mean, I love the gym, and it's always been a big part of my life and always will be. Mm -hmm. um, competition, I mean, do I miss it? Absolutely. I mean, I'm a competitor. I'm an athlete, first and foremost. Always have been, always will be. I mean, getting the all-time world record was a huge goal of mine and felt, you know, it was a huge achievement to finally get that. Um, and I do miss it. I miss competing. But whether to compete, um, you know, where I would compete, how I would compete, honestly, I, I don't feel it's fair for me to compete as a woman. And right. um, and I'm not saying that I don't want people to mis um, misunderstand that and think that that's how I think about all, all transgender athletes, because um, actually the research shows the opposite. And as long as someone's been on hormone blockers or had surgery and they're on estrogen for at least a year, it does appear to be very fair. But, um, but in my case, um, I'm still... Um, you know, I'm working with my endocrinologist and we're still trying to balance out my hormones and, and figure out what's best for me. So I am taking a combination of estrogen, female hormones and some um, very low androgenic, um, you know, uh, androgens. And, you know, trying to find that because the thing is when I went on estrogen initially, I lost so much strength. I lost so much size. And, you know, as you know, for like someone who's been a power lifter and a bodybuilder and as an athlete, yeah. that, that was very hard and very difficult for me. And, and I've still, my strength is nowhere close to what it used to be. I mean, I'm still, you know, it's still not bad. I, most, you know, regular gyms I walk into, I'm usually still the strongest person there, but, <laughs> but nowhere near what I was doing when I was, you know, number one in the world. Right. And, um, so, but that's frustrating. It's, it's frustrating to struggle with weights that used to be a warm up for me. 
Um, right, but, but then, it, isn't the goal different now, though? I mean, obviously, you want to be as much of a woman as possible. Is it is it that important to still be muscular? And if it is, isn't that like almost like a contradiction that's going on like inside you? Well, I think that's the misconception, right? That yeah. that muscle is only for men, and that muscle muscle. No, is you know what I mean, though. You're excessive, though, yeah. Janae. Well, know. yeah, being at the stream end of it, but yeah. yeah, no, but really, like what I came to understand was when I when I got I got a lot closer to the women in the strength sports, and and you know shared my story with them, and they really welcomed me. And I realized, like, my struggle was the same as the, the, a lot of the women go through. Like, they want to get bigger and stronger, but then it's like, oh, you look like a man, and and um, you know, there's pushback from their family, friends, from society. So I realized I struggled with a lot of the same things. And yet, but to be honest, yeah, I struggle with it. I mean, there's days I, I think I still think about dropping a bunch of weight yeah. just to make it easier to integrate into society. And then there's other days where I miss being 280 pounds and you know <laughs> bench pressing 700 pounds. Right. So it, yeah, I mean, as an athlete and as a woman, it, it's it's difficult. It's difficult to balance those things. So so are, are you taking androgen blockers or no? Um, I, well, I've actually had an orchiectomy, which for people who aren't familiar with that, that means I've had my testicles removed. Oh, so did. my body no longer produces any um, androgen. So other than the small amount from my adrenal glands, which is virtually nothing. Mm -hmm. But um, but yeah, so there's no need to take um, blockers because my body doesn't produce gotcha. anything. So yeah, estradiol and like I said, some mild androgens trying to balance out the right. strength loss and you know fat gain. What 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 surgeries have you had at this point to help make you more of a woman? Okay, so um, yep, so I've had an orchid. Well, I lost one testicle to cancer, which I think we talked about a long time yes. ago, and I had the other one removed. And then um, I've had facial feminization surgery, and then I've what also what does that entail? What do they do to your face? You know, it depends all it, all on the person, but there's a lot of attributes that um, like men typically have wider, square jaws, right. um, brow bossing above their eyes, the ridge above their you know eyes. Um, with women, cheeks tend to be more prominent, jaws more um, angled and more narrow. And uh, so, yeah, so they basically reduced my jaw on the sides, um, uh, cheek implants, and then um, the brow bossing, which I didn't have a lot, but that was shaved down over my eyes. My nose was really wide and prominent. They thinned that down a little bit. But basically, it's not like cosmetic surgery in the way people think of like going to a plastic surgeon to look younger or look right. better. This is just you know, make, trying to make me look more feminine. Now, and uh, actually, honestly, I'm very happy with the results. And yeah, it looks I still, good, I was going to say. Yeah. Oh, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I think it, I still look like me, just a more feminine version. Like basically, if you know my sister, or if I had been born female, this is the way I would look. So yeah, I'm really happy with the results. Um, I had also had vocal feminization surgery. Um, I don't know if you remember from before, but I had an extremely deep, very yeah. masculine voice. Absolutely. And um, so it, it's improved my voice. I, you know, it's not as feminine as I would like it. I. I I feel like I'm kind of more in between male and female now. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely increased in range, but uh, but I don't feel it's like fully passable. But you know, it is what it is. It did help. Um, and uh, what other thing? I mean, I've had full body laser hair removal. Um, oh gosh. Would you, do, would you do breast implants at some point? You know, I've looked into that a lot, and I've thought about it. And um, the, the thing is, being, being as muscular as I still am and being as lean as I still am, it's very difficult to get sure. a natural look. Right. And that's been and that's been my hesitation. I've had consults with several surgeons, and, and uh, so it's something I'm still thinking about maybe at some point in the future. But for right now, I've decided to hold off on that. Mm -hmm. And I haven't had full bottom surgery yet, but that's something else I'm also considering. It's definitely something I want to do, but... At the same time, I mean, there are risks, and while the surgeries have a very high success rate, mm -hmm. there's always that possibility of losing sensation or having right. other issues or complications. And um, you know, being in a relationship, that's something you know you have to consider with your partner too, and and a lot of things to think about, and and a lot of cost. I mean, I've already spent probably close to a hundred thousand dollars on wow. surgeries. Yeah, and you know, none of this stuff is well. A few more surgeries are starting to get covered by some insurances, but there's still the vast majority of this is not covered and it comes out of your pocket so right. it makes it very um you know very cost prohibitive let me ask you this question um you know if, if you did the bottom surgery obviously um would that be because you're doing it because you want to be in a, in a relationship with a man or are you looking to be in a relationship with a woman like what i know you've always been into into women has that changed since you've gone through you know your your transformation recently no 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 it hasn't i mean to be honest like i tried dating a couple guys and thought maybe that would be something that i might be interested in but yeah. It, I just I don't have the attraction and I don't have I don't think I have the ability to have a romantic connection with a man right. um, it, you know playing the feminine role in a relationship feels very natural for me but um, honestly no I, I, I'm continuing to date women I'm actually in a relationship right now with an amazing girl mm -hmm. and um, she actually identifies as a lesbian and so I she could say I'm in a lesbian relationship and and um, so those are things we talk about but uh, 
but no, it's going really well. I'm still like my, that's one thing people misunderstand a lot that they think people transition because of sexuality mm -hmm. and sexuality and gender identity are two different things sure, and they're of independent course. of each other. And, um, so yeah, no, I've always been attracted to women still. Am. Um, I mean, parts don't really matter to me, but it's more about who that person is and how I connect with them. And, right. and in that sense, I've really only had a romantic connection with women. Can, can you have, do you have like conventional sex with a woman when you, when you're with her? Um, I can like it's, but the things, the things I prefer and the things she prefer, um, you know, I play more of, I guess what you'd say a feminine role, but right. I even hate to say those things, right? Cause everybody likes different stuff and, and you know, but, um, but that's, it's always been that way for me. The, the one, the most difficult part for me with dating relationships was trying to play this masculine role because people saw, you know, croc up on, you know, up on stage competing and, <laughs> right. and, you know, right. me and the Marines. And I, and I was, I was a total alpha male in those situations. And I, and I still have those parts of my personality. But the thing is, in a relationship, that wasn't me at all. Right. So I would attract the type of girls who wanted this complete alpha male in the bedroom, and that wasn't me. In the bedroom, I'm as girly as it gets. And, yeah. you know, so that's, so there was always that disconnect, and it was really difficult for me to try to fake it and play that role. Interesting. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting dynamic because there are really no rules because it's it, you're right. completely off the grid at this point, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, well, that, that's the thing you come to find too is that people are, you know, com you know, very, very complicated and very complex, and and a lot of us are into different things, and people are afraid to admit that because, you know, because of the stigma and because of this, you know, ideal of masculinity, what we have to, you know, men have to live up to and what women are supposed to be. They're often afraid to ask for the things they really want, would really enjoy, because they're afraid of what people will think. Right. What? So what? Let's talk about the uh, documentary again. Uh, getting back to it, it's opening, and I understand twenty cities. Yeah, roughly 20 cities all over the country. Um, it premieres this Friday. It premiered in New York um, one week earlier. It's actually showing right now um, in New York City. And um, But yeah, and then it's available online on the 19th on Friday as well and uh, through a whole bunch of sources, iTunes, Amazon, YouTube, you know, almost all those downloadable sources. And uh, so we're really excited about it. It had a great run at the festivals. I was really yeah. surprised we won a bunch of awards, and including sweeping all the top awards at Hot Docs, which is a huge um, film festival for documentaries. And so we're really excited about it and, and hope people love the film. And most importantly, we hope that you know, it helps educate people that don't understand and you know, can inspire people like me. And, and uh, you know, just getting that word out there, I think that's the most important thing. When you watch the film now, are you like, oh man, I look terrible here. I'm, I'm so much, because you know, you've, you've obviously undergone a lot of surgery since that film. Do you, does, do you cringe? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, sometimes, you know, you cringe. It's like, you see old pictures, you're like, <laughs> ooh, and I'm sure in the future, I, if I saw myself right now, I might do that too. Yeah. But, um, you know, but it's one of those things, like I said, it's still a struggle for me with wanting, you know, the, the passion for strength training and balancing that with my femininity. But yeah, there's parts, and there's some things I say in the film and stuff that I, it makes me cringe and, um, you know, but, uh, you know, we grow and we learn and, yeah. and, uh, you know, things, things hopefully keep going in the right direction. Have you ever, have you, uh, talked with anyone else like that's, you know, high up in the, in the transgender community, like Bruce Jenner, you know, or, you know, whatever, Caitlyn Jenner now, uh, have you um, had any connection with her? Um, no, you know, people ask that all the time and surprisingly enough, our paths haven't crossed. Um, I mean, she, you know, she lives in a completely different world. Um, you know, so that, but our, you know, hopefully our paths will cross at some point and, and, uh, but you know, we come from very different backgrounds, very different worlds sure. and, and, uh, yeah, but at this point, yeah, no, our paths have not crossed. Would you, would you do a doc, would you do like a reality show if they ever asked you to do one? Um, I guess it would depend on what the goals were and what the, you know, and, and what kind of angle they wanted to put on. As long as it wasn't sensationalism or, you know, trying to turn it into a freak show. If I, if I, if I felt it could be positive for the community, I would 100% be for it. But if they were just like looking to poke fun at me and make things worse, I would not be interested. Yeah, I don't in that. think that that would be for a reality, you know, that might be a documentary. People might do something silly like that. But for a reality show, I think it would be, I think it would be yeah. interesting no. because of your yeah, dynamic. Yeah, if it, yeah, it is. I mean, you know, my, it's a crazy story, right? I yeah. mean, my life is, is just, you know, having someone who comes from this total alpha male background and also being trans and basically, you know, I'm half girly girl, half alpha male. And, sure. But yeah, if someone, if someone was interested in, you know, doing a reality show or some kind of version of that, and, and like I said, as long as it was going to be sincere, I'd be 100% for it. It's funny because when I interviewed you years ago, like about your bodybuilding and your powerlifting, you know, in, in a million years, if someone would have said, hey, Dave, um, who, who do you think of all the people you've interviewed uh, would be uh, was a transgender? I never would have guessed you, but that's probably 
the persona you took on because you didn't want anyone to find out, so you kind of went the opposite direction, right? Yeah, I mean, part of that was probably a little bit intentional, but part of it's also just who I am. You know, I am hyper masculine in a lot of ways, yeah. and you know, hyper competitive, and and I think some of my experiences led to that too. You know, being in the Marines, you know, always being an sure. athlete and playing football and wrestling forever and doing those things. So some of that cultured that, and some of it was me trying to hide who I was. But but in an athletic sense, that's just who I am, too. I mean, you know, that's like people say I, I was a savage and uh, and I still am in a lot of ways. You know, that's just part of who I am as well and what makes my story so crazy. How many muscles did you tear over the course of your career? Oh, my gosh. Almost almost every major one, you know, like both biceps, both triceps, left pec, right quad, left calf. <laughs> Um, separated my right AC joint. Yeah, I mean, I've had a ton of injuries. And, and the funny thing is you still look pretty, you look more functional than I am, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I'm lucky. I'm in pretty good shape. I healed well from all yeah. the surgeries and I still train. I mean, I have aches and pains like everybody that's right. been training for three decades. But uh, but no, I, can, I mountain bike, I hike, I do all kinds of things. And overall, I feel pretty good. Well, Janae, I want to just uh, thank you for coming on the show. Uh, the movie is called Transformer. It's available. I, I think iTunes would probably be the easiest place for people to re download it from, correct? Um, yeah, definitely one of the e easiest ones for sure. Yeah, that's where I saw it on there. And uh, so go to iTunes. You can download it from there. And I'm telling you, it's a great watch. I enjoyed it. I watched it with my wife. Uh, she enjoyed it. It's, it's a true, honest story. And it's very compelling, and if you, especially if you work out, I think that you can completely relate to a lot of the stuff you go through. And the, and the relationships and the tensions between your family and you were re very real. And uh, I just want to you know, say congratulations on, on putting that film out there, and I hope it wins even more awards and makes you guys a little more famous. Thanks, Dave. Really appreciate everything. All right, and that's going to take us to the end of another episode of Live With, brought to you by Species Nutrition. I'm Dave Palumbo. We'll see you next time.